Hello everyone! In this third one-step video, we will examine equations that have the unknowns in different places. But first, let's look at the order of numbers in a math sentence. If we take 1 plus 2 is equal to 3, we know that it's the same as writing it as 3 is equal to 1 plus 2 or 3 is equal to 2 plus 1. They're all the same thing. They're a fact family. We've seen this in previous grades. Similarly, if we write 5 plus x is equal to 12, we will go about solving in the same way because 5 is being added to x here. So the inverse of adding 5 will be to subtract 5 from both sides neatly. And we will do this on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side. On the left-hand side, I will be left with x. And on the right-hand side, I'm left with 7. In this equation, we see that x is on the right-hand side. Now, we could rewrite this as x take away 3 is equal to 7. But we need to be careful with this because the sign on 3 is negative. And sometimes when people rewrite them, they put the wrong sign on 3. If we look at the equation on the left, sometimes people think that 3 is positive because of the positive that goes with x, but that's not the case. The signs are always to the left. 3 is negative, x is positive, and 3 is negative. So I recommend that you leave the equation the way it is and just solve it without rewriting it. So in this case, we're subtracting 3. We should add 3 to both sides. On the left-hand side, we're left with x, and on the right-hand side, we have 10. At this point, we can take our solution, substitute it into the original equation, and write negative 3 plus our 10. Does it give us 7? Yes. So it's been solved correctly. Here we see that the x is on the right-hand side, and we have 1 subtracted from it, so we're going to add 1 on both sides. On the right-hand side, we are left with x. And on the left-hand side, we are left with 6. Now at this point, I would resist the urge to rewrite this as x equals 6. Sometimes people do this, but this is also a place where people lose negatives. It's not necessary to do that. The solution can be left the way it is. So at this point, we can take 6, substitute it into our original equation. And if I owe 1 but have 6, do I get 5? Yes, I do. So we solved it correctly. In this case, we're adding 4 to x. So our inverse would be to subtract 4 on both sides. On the left-hand side, we are left with x, and on the right-hand side, 12 take away 4 is 8. In this example, we're subtracting 17 from x, so the inverse would be to add 17 on both sides. On the left-hand side, I'm left with x, and on the right-hand side, I'm left with 19. Here we are subtracting 4 from x, so the inverse would be to add 4 on both sides. On the right-hand side, we will be left with x. And on the left-hand side, 10 and 4 is 14. Here we're subtracting 2 from x, so the inverse would be to add 2 on both sides. On the left-hand side, we are left with x. And on the right-hand side, we're left with 6. In this example, we're adding 5 to x, so the inverse would be to subtract 5 from both sides. On the left-hand side, I'm left with x. And on the right-hand side, if I owe 11 and I owe 5, I owe 16. Here, x is being multiplied by 2, so our inverse operation is to divide by 2 on both sides. On the right-hand side, 2 divided by 2 gives me 1 with x. 
And on the left-hand side, 10 divided by 2 gives me 5. Here, x is being divided by 3, so the inverse is to multiply by 3 on both sides. On the right-hand side, if I multiply by 3 to divide by 3, I'm left with 1 with x. And on the left-hand side, 3 times 5 is 15. Subscribe to my channel to get updates on new videos. And if you'd like me to create more, like and share with someone who might find this helpful. Thank you for watching and see you next time.